guys, John here with Survival Dispatch. And I get asked the question a lot all the time, what do you carry as far as food in a bug out bag or a get home bag? So I thought I would break out uh, exactly what I've been carrying in my bag, what stays in there all the time, and how I go through the different steps throughout the day of putting together uh, enough calories to support myself on the move. So this has stemmed from many years of hiking. Um, and what people have to remember is if we ever found ourselves in a bug out situation or a get home situation where we're carrying a lot of uh, pounds of weight in our back and we're covering a lot of miles, we're gonna burn a lot of calories. So we always wanna make sure that you know, we're replenishing our body with you know, some fats, some proteins, and a lot of carbs, but you know, make sure we get calories in ourselves as well. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you can go three weeks without food. Um, you can, but try going three weeks without food just while having a normal desk job. Uh, you'll want to kill somebody. Think about doing that plus hiking, you know, 10, 15, 20 miles a day with a heavy pack, uh, trying to avoid situations, and you're just going to make things 10 times worse. So, you know, what I always do is, is I always make sure that I'm getting calories and stuff in my body uh, so that I have fuel to, to do more activities. Because uh, that's the biggest thing is, yes, the human body can go two or three weeks uh, without food, but it starts shutting down after a couple of days. And if you're in a, if you find yourself in a survival situation, your activity level is going to go way up. You're no longer sitting on the couch, sitting at your desk, you know, walking around, you're now running, you're now maybe cutting wood, you're setting up camps, uh, you're tearing down camps, uh, you're avoiding situations. So you're, you're, your activity level is completely different. So, you know, one of the things that people also say is, hey, I'll be able to hunt or forage for food. Yes, that is correct. Um, but in certain situations, you know, are you actually gonna have time to dress a deer, to cook the meat, uh, to build a fire even without giving away your location? So, you know, what I try to do is, is I try to make my uh, food uh, as in, uh, in place as possible um, so that I can carry what I need for for myself um, you know to to go as long as I need to now if I come across wild edibles and things like that fantastic what that does is that uh, prolongs my food schedule so you know if I'm able to find berries or a fruit tree uh, if I'm able to take a small game real quick something like that um, you know I'm able to add that into the mix um, and and prolong my food so so, you know, the other question you have to ask yourself is in a get home situation or uh, are you stopping to fish? You know, a lot of people have fishing kits in there, but you have no clue how long you might sit on that bank and not catch anything. You might not even know if there is actually fish in that river, pond, stream, whatever it might be. So you might just be wasting your time, uh, you know, and you might find yourself based uh, in a situation where you thought you were going to have all this food and, you know, kill kill deer and hunt, uh, you know, catch fish, things like that. And now you're in a situation where you have no food um, and it's definitely not where you want to be. So, um, so how I set my pack up is uh, pretty much breakfast, lunch, and snacks come in a single Ziploc bag. So I have a, a day of breakfast, lunch, and snacks in a Ziploc bag. Uh, the only meal that I cook if I need to is dinner. Um, I'll pull out my stove, I'll boil some water, I usually use freeze-dried freeze food, and uh, that's the only meal I cook. I don't get up in the morning, I don't make oatmeal, I don't do any of that stuff. I, I want to make myself as, uh, as ready as possible in the morning. So, you know, I can, I can break down camp if I set up camp, and I can just take off. You know, I'm not waiting for water to boil, uh, I'm not cleaning pots, I'm not doing anything like that. It's just literally start putting in miles and eat while I go. So. For breakfast and lunch and snacks, I everything is 100% open up and eat. Uh, pretty much, I don't even need a fork for any of this. So um, I can just tip it back, you know. I can and just keep putting in miles because that's the biggest thing. When we're talking about a get home situation uh, or a bug out situation, it is about getting miles down. When you stop to set up camp you become static and stationary and that's where bad things can happen. So, you know, we're not wanting to have every single one of our meals be freeze dried because then you're stuck, you know, waiting for water, water to, to boil. Um, you can cold soak freeze dried food, but it's just, it, 
doesn't taste good usually. You know, it's just cold, mushy stuff. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about the different categories of stuff that I carry with me. 100% um, store bought. You know, I don't I don't make my own protein bars, anything like that. Um, in the morning, I usually start with something like honey stingers. Um, you know, they just give you a, a bunch of energy and boost to get going in the morning. Um, so that's usually what I go with is, is honey stingers. Um, you can also go with, you know, I, I like to get some, some quick energy and protein into me. So you can go with something that, that is high in protein, like nut bars, things like that. Um, you can do trail mix if you want to make bags of trail mix. Um, moving into to the snack category, uh, carry beef jerky. I like the epic bars. You know, you can get them in tons of different flavors uh, to each his own. Um, but, you know, quite a bit of protein, a little bit of fat in there also. So that's good. Um, snicker bars. You know, you can see this one's kind of smashed because all this did come out of my bag. It's always in there. Um, as, as it says right here, it satisfies. Um, Snickers bars, you know, I also use food. It is one of my morale boosters. Um, if you find yourself in a survival situation, it's probably going to be a crappy situation. So anything that you can do to, to make it a little bit more tolerable, to boost your mood a little bit, uh, is a huge score also. So, you know, having something like a Snickers bar, Man, pick whatever candy bar you like. Um, I like Snickers bars. Um, throw it in your bag. You know, you can have this as a midday snack. Um, you know, it's a huge win also. Um, coming into lunchtime, I usually, I like these tunas. Um, you can get them in tons of different flavors so you don't get flavor fatigue, you know, of eating the same thing every day. That's also something else that you have to consider when you're talking about food in your bag is don't just pack it up with like, oh, I got 18 of the same meals. Uh, you will get so tired of it. And once you get tired of it, you're gonna wanna stop eating it as much and uh, then you're not getting as many calories in you. So I like these tuna packets because I can get tons of different flavors of them and uh, you know just get a little bit of variety um, i like peanut butter and honey packs uh, i just like being able to to get you know some good taste uh, in my protein as well i can also squirt these on my uh, stinger bar as well these are like a, a crispy waffle so um, you know i can put these on here and eat it as well if i feel like i need a little bit more of a pick-me-up uh, as far as pick-me-up i like uh, energy shots these are goo shots um, you can get these with caffeine in them also, but, uh, you know, all these do is pretty much just give you amino acids, um, and, and caffeine, if there's caffeine in it, sugars, uh, but to get your body going, you know, so, uh, these are used a lot in marathons, triathlons, things like that. You know, this is what guys go for. They're super lightweight. Um, they're small, they're compact, they're single serving sizes. So, and you can get them in, I mean, literally these come in like a hundred different flavors. So you can find one that you like. But if you need a boost while hiking in the middle of the day, you know, I pop usually one of these. Um, multivitamins. Multivitamins are something that most people forget to, to put in their pack also. Um, you know, when you're in a situation where you're not eating the same as you usually do, you want to make sure that your body is still getting the vitamins that it needs in order to operate at the highest level possible that it can. And multivitamins are a great way. They're super lightweight. And, you know, even if you're not wanting to carry a, a ton of food with you, carrying multivitamins allows you to, uh, to get all the, the vitamins and minerals that your body's not getting out of foraging and things like that. So I carry multivitamins. Um, and then electrolyte drinks, you know, I have Gatorade packets here. Um, I really like Tailwind. Uh, once again, this is used a lot in the running community. What's great about this is it's not as sweet, it's not as high in sugar as Gatorade. It also has 200 calories built into it. It dissolves quick. Um, I always feel like Gatorade at times, if I'm doing a lot of really physical activity, it can kind of be a little hard on the stomach. I'm sure some of you guys have felt that before. That's just due to, to some of the stuff that, that's actually in it, where Tailwind is a lot, a lot easier on the stomach. I mean, these are made for like... Uh, ultra marathon runners and stuff like that, where they'll literally go, you know, two or three days in a hundred mile race and have nothing but tailwind. Um, so, you know, that's my, that's my daily bag. And what I do is, is I take a, a mixture of all this and I make a one day Ziploc bag. So this is pretty much all these items. Um, all that I've added in here is I do have a, a tailwinds uh, recovery drink in here as well. 
um, that I, I will have, you know, usually at the end of the day. And I have a Starbucks, uh, just an instant coffee is what I had. So um, threw that in there as well, just in case I wanted a cup of coffee. If it's a cold, you know, if it's cold out, something like that, I just want something to, to warm me up. Um, but what I do is, is this is, this is one day. So I've taken all these items, I put it into a single Ziploc bag. Um, I like to run a chest rig. Uh, I use a Hill People's gear chest rig. So what I do is, is at the beginning of the day, I take this out of my pack and this goes in my chest rig so I can open it up and I don't have to stop to, oh, I want to stop to get, you know, my tuna out. Oh, I want to stop. I want, you know, a piece of beef jerky real quick. I can literally just reach in. I can eat it. If I don't want to eat the whole thing, I can just throw it back in the bag. So what I do is, is I make one of these for every single day that I think I'm going to have to journey. I have about 10 of these, if not more, pre-staged in my pantry. So if I'm just, I work about 25, 30 miles away from work. So in my get home bag, I have just one of these. It should only take a day or so to, to get home. Uh, so I just have one of these. But if next week I have to say travel two, 300 miles, I will just grab more of these out of my pantry and slip them into my bag. Um, so therefore, you know, cause that's another thing is, is if you travel a lot of different distances, you have to be able to make your bag adaptable for those different distances. You know, this one bag of food is not going to get me 400 miles home. Uh, it's just not enough calories. So now I'm putting myself into a compromising situation. So all I do is, is I just grab more of these and throw them in my bag. Does it make my bag heavier? Yes, it makes my bag heavier. Uh, but I now have the food needed in order to, to cover that distance. So this is, this is what I've done through years of hiking. Um, and then I have a trash bag if, if I want to clean up my trash. So, um, so, you know, gauge how many days you think you're going to be to get to your destination. That might be your bug out location. That might be getting home, but calculate the number of days, put the adequate number of bags in there and you're good to go. So that's how I handle breakfast and lunch. Um, let me clear this off real quick. I'll bust out how I handle my dinner uh, around kind of a camp set area and uh, we'll talk about that. All right, guys, we talked about breakfast, lunch, and snacks throughout the day while traveling. Now we're going to talk about dinner. Uh, dinner is the only meal that I cook. It's usually at the end of the day. I'm trying to let my body rest a little bit, so I might be sitting down. You know, I might take my shoes off, let my feet air out for a little bit. So dinner is kind of where I slow down for just a little bit and, uh, you know, really focus on making sure that you know, I don't have any hot spots on my feet. Uh, if I have some sore muscles, I might try to rub them out, things like that. So it's a good time to, to also cook some food, get some good flavor in you, get some good needed calories. Uh, if it's cold weather season, you want to make sure that you eat before you go to bed. Uh, get that metabolism, that furnace burning. It'll keep you a lot warmer at night. Go to bed on an empty stomach. I promise you, you're going to be miserable if it's cold out because your body just isn't working to try to break that food down. Um, so it's going to just, it, you're going to be cold. Um, so, you know, there's kind of two trains of thought. Uh, a lot of people, you know, either it's a love or hate relationship. That's just how MREs are. Sorry. Um, a lot of people say they're way too heavy. Um, so therefore, therefore they'll never carry them. You know, um, it's a debatable thing because, uh, you know, built into an MRE, one of the reasons why it's so heavy is because it has all the water in it that's needed to cook the meal. It has the stove and everything that's needed to cook the meal, and it has the food also. So when you start starting to, to you know, really calculate weight here, it's not that heavy. Now, I will say MREs aren't the best tasting thing in the world. Um, I don't carry them a lot. I just don't like the the lifespan isn't as long as say freeze dried food. Um, and there's a whole lot more variety, I think, and better companies that make better quality food uh, in freeze dried. That's why I go with freeze dried. But you know, MREs are a good solution. I say just break them down. Um, it still gives you that, that warm meal that you might need. Um, so, you know, MRE is definitely your, your first option. So as far as I go, you know, I have my bottle of water to rehydrate my food. Uh, this is a, uh, a GSI outdoor uh, s pot, pretty much. And what I've done is I've made it a full cooking kit. So the top, what I like is it's also a mug. So if I want to drink hot uh, fluids out of it, and it also has a, a koozie. So the first thing you would do is take the koozie off to, to cook with. Um, but you can put the koozie back on. You can hold it all day long. So, so the, the top, this is just a pot uh, gripper so I can take it off the stove. 
lighter, a MSR pocket rocket two stove, and a fuel canister. So you know you'll you'll screw the stove on top and take the koozie off. Put your stove on top once it's all done, boil your water, and then pour the water into the freeze-dried food. But I like this because it makes it a, you know, all-inclusive cooking kit all into a small package. So that's how I carry all of my stove stuff. So bring it into the bag. This is a A-lock sack. This is how I have hiked for, for many, many years. This bag, these bags just, they last, I think, for forever, I feel like. Um, they never rip. The reason why I put it in this bag is I'm able to seal it just in case I ever had a breach of food. It doesn't fly, you know, chili mac all over the inside of my bug out bag. Um, but the other reason why I carry this bag is I can keep all my food. I can keep my utensil, my sponge, everything like that. So all I have to grab is these two things and I have everything I need to make a meal. Um, the other reason I carry this is you'll see this is kind of crinkled. I will literally take this bag if I'm in bear country, I'll tie a, a uh, a piece of string around it, throw it up in a tree, and I can hang this in a tree if I'm worried about bears coming around. I don't have to carry a bear canister. They're just big and cumbersome. Uh, get this thing up high enough. The other thing too is it's an extra layer of protection with regards to smell. Uh, you know, if you're thinking two-legged creatures are gonna be, you know, smelling your food um, and giving away your location, it gives that another smell. But what I'm more focused on is the smaller four-legged creatures. I've had squirrels and chipmunks literally uh, bite holes through small packs and stuff that I've had on my backpack when I've stopped at night uh, trying to get to you know nuts and stuff inside. So I keep it in an extra uh, Ziploc bag just so that you know it, it helps prevent that as well. So um, type of food you know that I like to carry. I got quite a few different brands in here just to kind of show you the difference. And once again, uh, the reason why I carry this larger bag Depending on how many days I'm going to be out, that's how many meals I pack in here. Um, so, you know, if, if it's just a, a one day, I think, kind of trip or two days, you know, I might just carry one mountain house. Um, if I am hundreds of miles away from my destination, you know, I can just fill more and more bags in here. Um, so, you know, you got things like spaghetti. And uh, let's see what else is in here. Uh, this backpacker's pantry. This is Mountain House, backpacker's pantry. I just kind of want to show you guys a difference here. Uh, this is Wild West chili and beans, you know, if you need to clear out the campsite. Uh, Alpine Air. This is a, this is a, I like this brand, Alpine Air. This is a Thai style chicken with noodles. What else we got here? Uh, Valley Food Storage, Irish Pub, Cheddar Potato. This is a, uh, Trail Fork, this is a new brand that I've liked a lot. Coconut granola with milk on a cold morning if I did want to fire up the stove. Um, there's some granola. And uh, you know, if I needed to reward myself one day, uh, Backpacker Pantry uh, Hot Apple Cobbler. So, uh, you know, sometimes you just need dessert. Um, I keep my long spork in here so I can dig out and uh, sponge so I can clean my pot. So, you know, when I get to camp, I uh, set up my stove, I get water boiling, pour it into the bag, and then eat out of the bag. I don't, I don't carry any other pots, dishes, plates, anything like that. It just makes more of a mess. Um, so, you know, this is this is what I do for dinner. Um, you know, a lot of people might vary with regards to things, but usually, you know, like I said, dinner is the only time of day that I start to wind down uh, and really focus on, on trying to let my body, you know, recoup a little bit. So I like to use dinner to try to, to keep me slow. Um, you know, one thing too, a lot of people say they don't want to carry a stove. Yes, I could boil water over a fire, um, but that's giving off, you know, first of all, I have to go get wood. Second of all, I have to have conditions, you know, correct with regards to, to wind, rain, things like that to get a fire started. It takes time to get a fire started. Um, you might not want to give away your location with regards to smoke, you know, spewing through the air. Um, and yes, I know people are going to say like, oh, you can dig a Dakota fire hole and things like that. It, it's so much easier just to carry a stove. I mean, this thing weighs, you know, nothing. It's a small, lightweight. Um, I know I can boil water in four minutes, five minutes, have it going. Um, so, you know, I choose to always carry a stove. Um, 
stove also puts off a ton of heat with no signature. There's no smoke, anything like that. So if it has super cold conditions, I could just warm my hands up if I needed to. Um, so, you know, that's why I carry a stove um, and it's versatile. You know, I mean, you can use it for so many things. I can boil water in it super easy if I had to um, purify some water. So, you know, carry a stove with you. I believe you should always carry a stove with you if you're going on multiple day tricks. Uh, so carry a stove. Um, but this is, this is what I carry for dinner. I, I, per, I choose to go with freeze dried food over MREs. I do have some MREs, but I usually leave them at the house uh, for situations like that. So stick with freeze dried food, carry a stove, uh, spork, sponge, and water and you're good to go. So guys, I hope you really liked, you know, my food setup, how I set things up. Um, this is something that I have used in the field for multiple years. So, you know, I, I don't change that much nowadays. Uh, it's pretty much set. Brands might change here and there, uh, but the basis of it has been the same for years. It's tried, it's true, and it's tested. So I hope you guys like this video. If you got any questions or comments with regards to anything else, with regards to food in a bag, feel free to leave it below. If you got any other comments, leave those below as well. And until next time, be safe. Mm -hmm.